Ladies and gentlemen and genders from A to Z, I bring you the light at the end of the cataclysmic tenebrosity that is 2020. From not surviving a heartbreaking, tear-jerking coma in the Warner Brothers hit show Everwood, to Tyler Perry's show The Haves and Have Nots as Officer Miller, to providing the voice to a precursor hero from... Uh, some video game created by, uh, Naughty Dog, I think. Uh, I present to you the voluptuous legend, Mike Irwin! Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I'm, am I supposed to answer to that? Sure, Thank you. why not? Yeah, okay. You are in Tyler Perry's sh The Haves and Haves Nots, right? Uh, yes, I did like three episodes for them, yeah. Okay, because I saw it, I was going through IMBD, and I was like, is to what it shows, it was like the latest thing that you were in, so I wanted to go from mm -hmm. like beginning to end, but I wasn't sure. But now I have confirmation, yeah. and that's epic. That's it, I'm there, I'm there. Mike, um, how are you? I'm great, how are you doing? Oh, I'm nervous, <laughs> very nervous. Oh, don't Can't be nervous. Can't lie. There's nothing to be nervous about. So we're here to have some fun. <laughs> As I seen on, I believe Instagram, you just had a baby. Uh, I did. Yes, he was born um, in March, and he's just the coolest little guy. He's yeah? my first biological child, and um, I also have a, uh, a stepson who's eight years old. Um, oh, okay. Nine, so uh, it's full, full boy family over here, but uh, we have a good time. So you already got some like uh, some parenthood. Oh uh, yeah, experience. Yeah, definitely uh, have been uh, immersed in that for a while now. So, uh, and it's fun. It's something I've always wanted. Uh, I'm glad that um, I get to experience it. Uh, it. You know, both both sides of it, uh, sort of the adoption side and also the uh, biological side. It's been very rewarding. Well, that's awesome. It. That's awesome yeah. to hear. Well, I'm glad everything's going good for you and your fam. Uh, for my first question, I wanted you wanted I wanted your opinion on this guy that I kind of dug around and found <laughs> about this picture. Ah, uh, yeah, you know when uh, you're uh, working your way up in Hollywood, and um, you know you got to do uh, a lot of press for things. Uh, they like to style you in ways that you never thought you would ever have to um, consider, and that's <laughs> definitely one of them. You didn't have uh, any say in this? You know, you kind of just roll with the punches. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's like anything. It's, you know, it's nice that people, um, you know, enjoy what you do and that they want a chance to get to know you. And sometimes, um, you know... Um, they they invite you in and and go hey, I have this idea are you involved you know it's it's a collaborative business in all regards even the publicity side of it so you just kind of go okay yeah what do you got what do you got and you're like all right uh, and I think then you know I'm in my twenties and very 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 green to the business itself and uh, you just kind of go cool I guess this is what it is and sometimes you go, ah they'll never use this but usually the minute you say that. So. <laughs> uh, when that when when you go oh gosh they did use that uh it's funny you know what oddly enough a lot of people show me this picture uh because it's so dreamy i guess i don't know uh, i do get lost you know, in your eyes just, yeah it's just uh it's what you do man that's just how, that's how you do it you know <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think i'm the first i don't think i'll be the last of the you know hey uh, honored that people would uh, even want me to sit down for an hour and take a picture. So, there you go. So we got. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, this uh, <clears throat> this thing where it says claim the fame got undressed and caught eyes in the new guy. Would you still agree to that to this day? Um, gosh. You did know, you say that or did they put that for you? Um, I think I think at that time. Uh, you know, I, I, I had maybe just got on to Everwood, so my resume at that moment was, was pretty slim. So I think at, at, at that point, they just kind of go, okay, well, he's done this, so we'll use that. I don't know if, I don't really feel like Underrest was my, my claim to fame. It, was, it wasn't even my first job, actually, um, 
out in Hollywood. And I really don't think people recognize me from that show. If, if people even know what the, the show is anymore, it's because it's, it's been a while, but, uh, I'm not going to say that was my claim to fame. I think really, um, you know, Everwood is when, when I think people really kind of started going, Oh, Hey, who is this guy? And, um, mm. and, uh, I get a lot of people who, um, uh, recognize me from Dexter, even though I wasn't really, you know, it was only in a couple episodes, but, uh, the storyline was, was strong in my character and, uh, and for what it did to Dexter that season. Um, so maybe those are my claims to fame. Hmm. I don't know. You know, it's, it's, it's just whoever likes whatever. Um, <laughs> I know a lot of people too. I did this movie. Um, She's too young. It was a lifetime movie with like Marsha Gay Harden, and uh, very interesting story. I will have to say, and uh, apparently it's one of those that they show in like sex ed through high schools a lot, and it's become this, what? you know, sort of yeah, um, uh, iconic. I don't know if it's iconic, but it's definitely been sort of a cult classic following underground kind of. Thing that a lot of people go oh my gosh you were that that crazy guy in this in this show i'm like yeah yeah that was me <laughs> wow yeah you said it was in sex ed you know it's so yeah i've had a lot of people like reach out to me and go i saw you in this movie it was called she's too young um and we watched it in, in sex ed class it's 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 based on a true story that actually happened in georgia where um, like the biggest outbreak of syphilis, I know this is not probably where you wanted this to go, uh, happened <laughs> due to this little area in, in Georgia and all the high schoolers and stuff were all just doing their thing and it just spread. And so they made this sort of like mini documentary lifetime about, and it was supposed to, it's educational and just like, you know, be, you know, be cautious and, and be aware. But, uh, when we were making it at the time, I don't think we were really making it or thinking of it as really being, you know, here, watch this as an education. We just thought it was a nice sort of reminder that uh, we're all human and 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 not invincible. Uh, pretty interesting, pretty interesting story for sure. I think they even made a documentary. So, damn, um, good message. That's yeah. a good message. Yeah, yeah. Wrap it up, I guess. So let's see here. On it, it claims that you're on the horizon of The Hulk, where you played 16-year-old Bruce Banner in the 2003 adaptation of The Hulk. Uh, mm -hmm. How how did you go about that? How'd you get, like, the role? Oh, you know, that was an interesting story, too. Um, yeah, so if you if you watch the original one with, uh, with Ang Lee, um, that's the one with Bruce, with uh, um, Eric Banner. I almost said Bruce Banner. <laughs> uh, Eric Bana, um, amazingly talented actor, and Jennifer Connelly's in it as well. And um, you know, it's one of those where, just like any other actor's story, is you get the audition. And um, and I remember walking. I had a friend with me because it was like, okay, I got to go do this audition real quick, and we'll go have lunch. And it, it, there wasn't like a lot of lines. And I remember we were walking. We were we were in Universal Studios, and I'm walking walking towards the building, just chatting it up with my buddy. And, I remember looking at him, I was like, man, whoever gets this is going to be a really lucky dude. Uh, <laughs> you know, because I guess at that time, you just don't really think, oh, I'm, you know, it was a big thing. Comic book movies were just starting to come out. Yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> What's going um, on? Yeah, so comic books, movies, like Spider-Man had just come out. Uh, and, you know, so the Hulk was coming. I was like, oh, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, I guess I just, I didn't think like, oh, this will be me. Not that I didn't have like confidence in me. It was just like, okay, I get that this could be really anybody. And uh, so, anyways, I, I kind of jokingly made that comment, went into the audition, and um, and left probably there fifteen minutes. Or Did you know which long. role you were going in for when you went no in? No idea. Had no idea. They just give you a script, and you're like, all right, I'm gonna act this. Yeah, and a lot of times, oh, that's the, stressful. The script you get. Like I, I didn't get a full script. You get like little pages of scenes, and these scenes were not even related close to the movie at all. Oh, um, they're okay. just sort of these dummy scenes that you do, and I think it's just to see, you know, if you can convey something on screen and translate, 
you know, emotions from lines. And um, so I went in and did it. A month goes by. I mean, month, month and a half. No, I don't, I don't hear a thing, you know, and, and that's kind oh, of the gosh. actor's way too. You just kind of, you just go, ah, all right, you know, I forget about it. Uh-huh. Uh, a month goes by. I get this call and my agent was like, you have a director's meeting um, for the Hulk. And I was like, I was like, you're like, what? I'm Banner. I'm yeah, Bruce I was Banner. Like, <laughs> I was like, okay and uh they're like yeah you're gonna go meet ang lee and then oh. i was like i was like oh uh, i was like what is this for you know the hulk i was like oh my gosh i was like well okay let's go do this so send it yeah, yeah i went in and um met ang and super super professional guy um really nice quiet um sometimes you can walk into a room and and uh you feel the you know like hey what's going on in the small chat you know this was this was you know big movie he was he's so focused i think that's what makes him who he is Mm -hmm. so i knew then it was like okay this is just business and as i'm doing the scene with the casting director i mean he's all over the room he's like squaring his fingers up like a frame looking at me and you know that's a little crazy and i'm focused on the (laughs) casting director while he's kind of dancing in the background I, i don't know if it was just to be like can I get this kid to break and pull focus? And I just remember thinking, I'm just going to ignore him. <laughs> ah, that's probably for the best. Probably for the best. Yeah. And um, long story short, I mean, I didn't hear anything for like another three months, two months. Oh my gosh. And um, it was like a Monday morning and they called me and they are like, hey, you're going to be on set tomorrow. And I was like, <laughs> well, it's okay. all right. Good They're thing like, I didn't have plans. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, the life of the actor again is just you always have to be available. And if you made plans, you sometimes are very flaky, but yeah. So I thought, and... okay, well, this is great. And you know, I, I was excited for sure. I was like, oh, wow. And they got me there for a week. And I remember I showed up and uh, no script, nothing. I had nothing. <laughs> um, I show up on location and someone, you know, the, the AD grabs me and he's like, hey, you want to say hi to Aang? I'm like, yeah, this is great. And uh, I see him on the set. He's like, hi, Mike. And he just, he shakes my hand. He stares um, right into my eyes. And he goes, your eyes are green. And I was like, well, yeah, yeah, they are Like I came prepared. (laughs) Yeah, it was kind (laughs) of like, I was like, I didn't know to be like, well, thank you. You know, I was born (laughs) with these. This was my mother's. Thanks, I grew Um, up myself. Right, you know, I I was thinking, is he complimenting me? And I was like, well, okay, well, yeah, yeah, they are. And he goes, um, they're supposed to be brown. And uh, I was like, uh, okay. You know, like, what do you do? Like, hold on, let me sneeze real hard and see if I can get the, the burnt. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, so he was like, this isn't going to work. And I immediately was like, uh, just thinking, well, I guess this, this isn't going to work. Like I'm, I'm done. Um, all right. And he gets on the phone and he makes this, he calls this person. He's like, ah, and has like walks away as he's talking to which i never saw him again until we were on set and like 20 minutes later this motorcycle just rolls up and i'm still standing like literally in the same spot like i haven't moved like no one's sent me to a trailer they're just like hold on for a minute like they're putting this fire out like and i'm going what are they gonna do this motorcycle pulls up has one of those little um containers in the back of it pops it open and it's contact lenses that's what i was thinking i was like Sounds like some contact lens yeah, could work in this and, situation, but wow. And I was like, okay. Now, I've never worn contacts or glasses. Oh, and gosh. And these were the first time I've had an experience with that. And I know normal contacts, they just kind of like, you know, cover, you know, your pupil, your iris. Your pupil, I guess that's really what it is. Um, yeah. These were the full eye because she didn't have the actual normal ones and they were tented like sunglasses oh so i was like okay so they have these now i've got this lady putting these giant contacts that don't really fit in my eye now it looks like i have sunglasses on uh, through my eyes even though you would just see brown eyes we get that going i go to set and they're handing me my sides i'm like oh these are my lines oh fantastic and and it's the scene where i like wake up from a nightmare you know, I'm, I'm like in the first five minutes of this movie, but it's the scene I, he wakes up from a nightmare and it's dark in my room. <laughs> so 
I'm in a dark room, basically with sunglasses on, trying to figure out where I even am. Oh my um, god! So it was one of those moments in my life that I'll ne I will never forget because this whole time I feel like I'm just like falling into just um, I don't know, just despair. I'm just like I'm not. What am I doing? Oh my gosh! Everything's going wrong. And Did they hurt? Did the contacts out. hurt? Oh yeah, the, like my eyes got really dry, and like I said, since they were the full eye ones, like you could just feel the edges, like in your uh, head almost. Oh my god! Now I can't see. I've got someone giving me eye drops between every takes uh, because my eyes aren't used to these things, uh, and that was my first real introduction to to the movie. Uh, so that was it was one of those things like, look, man, you just suck it up and do do your job. You got to do it. Yeah. Um, and and uh, it was a yeah, it was my introduction to like a big movie like that where it's like you just you know go do it. So I did it, and after that first day, everything else, you know, we actually had you know. It, we did we did fine and you just you get over it and um you know hope that hope you don't end up on the floor of so the editing room did they just did they at any point tell you that you were going to be bruce just for a small part or were they just, they just threw you into this yeah you kind of just get thrown into it um i knew that i was playing young bruce banner like i okay. knew okay. i was and but i did not know what that meant um like i said I, I i think i got my sides the day i showed up uh -huh. um and i had a few scenes um i think most of my scenes actually ended up on the special features dvd oh, um, shit, i gotta get that now yeah so yeah there's a couple of, like little extra scenes where uh he's like in the lab um science lab and it's more high school oriented um scenes of like what it must have been like to be him younger but it never really had a purpose i think in hang's eyes once we shot it i don't think it was just one of those moments it's like all right sometimes you just shoot more than you need and i think that was a little excess so. yeah i gotta shave some corners yeah pretty much so it ended up there but i still got the scenes they were fun we had a great time i mean he I, probably one of the best sets i've ever been on i mean you never heard the ad say please be quiet um you know more than one time you know, be like, all right, we're filming. Um, and it was amazing. And, and that's just the kind of respect that he, um, he, he, he commands without having to say anything. And it was, it was all inspiring. It was, it was, it was a great experience though. As, as nerve wracking, it was on the first. Oh yeah. I <laughs> bet like, it was. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. So, well, damn, fun. very insightful. I will say yeah. that, uh, and I, until up until the point that I started like really like I knew who you were and things like that but until i actually started like i knew i had this interview and then i started uh researching you that i actually saw that you were in the hulk movie and i was like i that is literally my childhood hulk movie like i love that movie so much and <laughs> seeing you in it i was like i feel like i would have well maybe not have recognized you but your voice i, I know i would have at least recognized your voice so i, I remember I, w or I went or i found a youtube video or something showing your scene i was like holy shit he's right there he's in this movie <laughs> yeah yeah I you uh there yeah researching i was like wow this guy's in a big chunk of my childhood which i did not expect at all but <laughs> i will God. take that as a compliment in the fact that i i am uh, i've always felt like i was one of those actors who could do a lot of different characters without really being noticed as the same person and i think it was a strength and a weakness in the same because like you know uh so i'll say thank you i don't know if that was a compliment or not but um but yeah hey, hey as long as you enjoyed it uh, great. great oh yeah you are phenomenal i have one other question about the hulk movie uh just sure. uh did you by any chance meet stan lee did you see him meet him at all by chance ah uh, you know um no you know during um you know during that shoot I mean, it was like the president was in town, you know. Sorry if you can hear running water. I'm in. No, I can't. My little basement. Okay. Um, no, I didn't. I did not get to meet or see Stan Lee. Um, and the only time I actually saw him uh, was at the was at the premiere. And you know, he was just kind of like at, you know, I yeah, I could see him down at the other end of the carpet. You know, he had an entourage of people protecting him and and that kind of thing. That's still got to be kind of um, surreal. It was cool. I mean, I, I, you know, I did get to see him like 
in person, if you will, from a distance. That's something. Uh, which it's like a really concert. Cool. Yeah, yeah, but it was it was cool to see him. And um, when we did actually finally sit down to watch the movie, um, uh, the guy sitting right in front of me was Lou Ferrigno. So I thought that was pretty oh, cool. Oh, wow. Yeah, I love the little reference they did uh, in that Hulk movie of him and Stan Lee. They're walking out of a police station, I think, or a mailroom or something like that. Yeah, it was, um, what was it? Yeah, I think it was like the security. I think it's when the Hulk broke out of the, when he broke out of the lab. Because, like, Lou Ferrigno was like a giant security guard. Yeah. Or they both were security guards, I think. Gosh, it's been a while since I've watched that. It was a good, yeah, me too. But uh, it it was a really good reference. I really liked that. So, uh, speaking of DC characters, you also voice acted for Speedy, the Green Arrow's teenage sidekick in the 2003 Cartoon Network show Teen Titans. How uh, how was that? Um, that was awesome. Um, I mean, Teen Titans really is a great show. In fact, my my stepson he watches it all the time. And, yeah, another big part um, of my childhood as well. That's yeah, where I'm like, team. I'm like, Mike, you're everywhere. What's going on? How have I not, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, yeah, you know, that's you know, and then the Teen Titans Go really. Um, we don't uh, have to talk about you know, that. We watched a lot of that too, but uh, we have to talk about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, it was just it was such a fun time uh, doing all of that stuff, and the people I got to work with and meet. Um, Jim Cummings was in one of the episodes that I did and I don't know if you know who Jim Cummings is but but he's one of those that maybe his gro- you, you have l- heard him uh, amazing voice actor your whole life he's the voice of Winnie the Pooh um, oh wow much, Tigger you know. and Tasmanian Devil yes and I believe he was Scrooge McDuck or he was no 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 he's, he was a lot of the Disney villains um, amazing amazing iconic um, yeah, I see that. Wow. You know, as the man of a thousand voices. And, and I remember um, getting to, I got to sit next to him while we voice acted, you know. And um, who did he play? He was in that episode. There was, because um, it was, there was a few episodes. I think it was like a part one and part two, uh, like Teen Titan Towers or something like that. And there was this alien boss who morphed everyone or warped everyone ah. to like this battle arena he was the main villain in that right okay okay yeah i yeah there's not really a place for as far as i know to find like the original teen titans i was only able to find a few scenes of just your character and robin like fighting mm-hmm. that's all i was able to see so it's just kind of like i have i have insight on that so i don't know much about uh, yeah and i think part. the reason we were fighting was because Jim Cummings character was who pitted us together to fight because we were saving the earth and I don't remember the whole storyline it's been a while for that one too but uh, (laughs) yeah so that was it was cool and Wesley um, from Star Trek uh, because I was a huge Star Trek fan this is the next generation Wesley Crusher did you get to meet him see him he he was also in that episode I believe he voiced another another Titan character for a while so it's cool like you walk in and uh there's just this like amazing room of talented people that you're just like what am i doing here you know i (laughs) I never you know it's funny it's like i never really went into this going i want to be a voice actor i i remember thinking if i'm going to do commercials i'd rather be the voice of a commercial rather than in a commercial um Hmm. and so my agent was like well let's just get you a voiceover and you know i started doing all this kind of stuff and was like this is way more fun because you really can be anything you want to be without having to worry about what you look like yeah do you Uh, put all the emotion in your voice yeah um so yeah it was it was it was such a cool thing and like you know i got my own little action figure and as a kid growing (laughs) up that's all that's all i ever wanted you know i'm a i'm a huge nerd so i collect a bunch of toys and things like that i have a ton of them and so did you know um, yeah. you were gonna or not gonna but do you did you know speedy as a character as like a hero or that he was green arrows uh sidekick before going in no you know i never um no i didn't know that first you know um and oddly enough i don't know if you're familiar i mean i grew up with like you know i remember saturday night morning cartoons so my comic book knowledge 
was I read a few of them. You know, I love Superman. I love Batman. I loved Spider Man. I used to watch the Wolf. You know,、um, the X Men cartoons in the morning, and like He Man and those. Uh, those cartoons.、Um, so when it came to Teen Titans, no, I, I I was familiar with a few of the characters, but like I didn't know Speedy and, and wasn't really sure what、um, exactly or where he came from. So you know, I looked all that stuff up、oh, okay, back cool. then and 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 tried to figure it out. And oddly enough, one of my best friends who who did pass away, but I loved him to death,、uh, Michael Turner. He was、um, he's one of them.、Uh, I think one of our best. Comic book artist of the、uh, of this century for sure, and he revamped DC and Marvel、um, back in the early 2000s.、Um, so I got a big introduction to like all the rest of these like side comic books, and I still have some friends who work、um, in the comic book industry that that do some great stuff. So、um, yeah,、wow. yeah, the Teen Titans weren't my thing, but、um, until I I got to be a part of it, and it was it was such a great great. Comic book series, but、um, I've always been a fan of, you know, the Dark Knights and all that stuff. Paint me jealous, man. That is,、uh, I, you know, I've I've been more of a Marvel fan. I will say、yeah. that, but I mean, comic books and superheroes all together has always been amazing in itself. I know, which, right? How can you kind of not love them? <laughs> <laughs> which kind of leads me to my next question, which is,、uh, what do you choose, or who do you like more, DC or Marvel? Oh, the old, and you know that's such um, it's a daring question, unfair question. You know, I, <laughs> I, I like Wolverine had has been symbolically, um, and and like one of the best characters in my life due to just、um, friends I know passing away and and dealing with ailments and like just loving like that his real superpower was the healing and there was a lot of spirituality. Um, growing up around him for some reason, so、uh, you know that leans me to the Marvel side. But really,、um, you know, Batman and and the Superman. I never really liked Batman versus Superman, but I love Batman and I love Superman. So, and I guess you know, as you get older, you go, oh, these were two separate entities, you know, Marvel and DC. But as a kid, you don't really think about that. So yeah, I kind of,、no. <laughs> I kind of, I, I kind of, I guess. I'm still ignoring that line、um, because I'm not sure. Because each one of them does. You got too much love for both、one. sides. I I do. You know, there's no, there's、sense. no. I mean, like, like I said, there's some amazing characters in Marvel, and there's some characters that I was like, no way. And then there's some amazing characters in DC, and there's some characters that I'm like, I don't care.、Um, so I'm cherry picking. I, I I just picked out, you know, my Superman, Batman, and my.、Uh, And、uh, my Wolverine, I loved the X Men. They were just, they were just so much fun. So,、uh, and you know, Spider Man, and I do, I, I did love the Hulk. So, yeah, Spider Man yeah, and Hulk, they、really. were my, they were my top favorites as a kid. So that's why I was always like, especially Spider Man, to this day, obsessed.、Yeah. But for that reason, is why I'm like Marvel only. DC doesn't exist to me. <laughs> no, it, it exists. Yeah, yeah. I,、uh, I, I'm. I guess I'm gonna have to be boring and just be like, I don't. I, I can't really. <laughs> I can't really say one or the other because、um, I have such a love for these specific characters more in general, and they just happen to be on either side. So hey, I'm just glad they both created them. You know what I mean? Hell yeah.、Uh, one other kind of question. It's not really related to. Speedy in the Teen Titans or anything, but I、uh, just wanted to see if you heard how、uh, Robert Pattinson is going to be the new、mm-hmm. Batman. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I did watch the trailer. I don't know if you've seen it. I have. And it's it looks pretty cool. It does. It does. You know,、um, sometimes、lie. trailers can be very deceiving.、Um, so you know, I'm not one of those people too. I know it's it's it's. A little pet peeve. It's so easy to criticize without seeing. So, you know, I I'm one of those that I mean, like I said, it looks pretty cool, and I hope that they keep it in that same tone as like what Christopher Nolan did for the Dark Knight series, because I feel like that's more in the vein of what Batman really was. I mean, that's that's how the original started as the Dark Knight was this really dark. You know, I think everyone sort of, you know. 
you know, equated it to more of like family once, you know, the Tim Burton came out and they kind of Warner Brothers sort of made it this more family affair um, yeah. style movies and putting in the theme parks and things like that. But really, um, the darkness and and is is what I remember first. So I like that they're taking that spin. And uh, I, I, you know what? I'll watch it. I, uh, I'll watch it until I can't watch them anymore. <laughs> I'm one of those. I'm like, <laughs> all right. You know, I don't really like that they're making this. I'm not sure that my nerdum is really going to, you know, really value what these people are doing. But at the end of the day, you know, um, I got to watch it first before, you know, I get to make my judgments. But um, I will go see it. It looks, it looks pretty cool. And, um, you know, they've done, a, they've done a pretty good job with it. This last one, I didn't really, I didn't really enjoy the um, the the last sort of run with Batman and Ben Affleck, and nothing but Ben Affleck performance really. I just, I don't know. There was just something about how it was all put together just didn't really resonate as well with me as it did uh, on the other ones. So yeah, DC but I'll movies give it a shot. haven't really, they haven't really had a good one in a while. That last Joker movie was phenomenal, I'll say. But Marvel's oh, really the been Joker? taking it with the movies. Yeah, the Joker movie. My God, that movie was incredible. What? I yes. mean, that's Joaquin Phoenix's performance was was just, I mean, breathtaking. Yeah, apparently they weren't even. I don't think they were even going to go like that deep with the movie. But I guess something specific happened, and then that's how they led to the movie kind of being. Uh, an accidental miracle I'll say that <laughs> yeah you know I would um, yeah you know what the, definitely the term movie magic there is a little element of that mystery of putting the ingredients together and, and causing this magnificent explosion and they definitely did that I, I, I do believe that um, uh, you know Joaquin is an amazingly talented person professional prep i mean this guy does his homework and um i think that whole um crew were at that caliber and when you mix all of that together you do you you when you do have that miracle magic it's it's just beyond what most people can do you know it wasn't like they were salvaging something i think they had a great thing going in the beginning and then let go of it to the point where it became something probably bigger than it it was originally intended but um man they did an amazing job one of my favorite movies for sure for sure it was yeah yeah it's one of my bad. favorite uh my girlfriend she's obsessed with it as well and we we started dating and then we started figuring out that we both loved the new joker movie we're like god damn destined to be <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah uh, sounds like a keeper speaking of hospital rooms you were you made an appearance in the code black show as randall underwood in 2016 <laughs> on cbs uh-huh. how was that i was able to actually watch that episode and i will say you gave a great performance well thank you um code black was cool man i mean any chance you get to be you know they i'm a, i was sad when i heard that they weren't really going to pick it up for season three because there was such you know it's it's rare sometimes that you get on a set and you're like this is cool like the, the people that were involved that were spearheading all of the production part and crews and things were just really nice people and they just really worked well together you know and a lot of times you can always find sort of that one stick in the mud the cancer sometimes on a set that just you know sort of you can maneuver around but you can still kind of feel it and and that was a show that even the creator like him and i we, you know got to chat and um uh just super great people like um i can't and, and, you know i i'm positive anyways i i don't really you know say that about a lot of experiences i've had uh because because they are few and far between um but that was one of those where it's like man it was just it was such a great environment and um when when you're in a in a comfortable place like that i feel like as an actor you are um 
more relaxed to be able to do and make the choices you want to do and by it gets doing you a that, little more focused it does it gives you the confidence and it gives you sort of that energy and you can feed off of that and uh yeah man i was swinging for the fences on some of those because um i just really enjoyed the environment and i enjoyed the, the material and um you know they let me really kind of do my own thing and trusted me and uh that, i mean that's the biggest gift you can give an actor is to be able to yeah, trust what you're gonna do just like get out there do it right yeah um hmm. it was fun we had a good time so you have a so in the okay spoilers in the uh show uh your character's father gets into an accident or hurts himself or is mugged can't remember the exact thing that happened but yeah, he, you he gets mugged mugged and your your character is uh gets upset later on I was gonna ask how easy do the waterworks come for you? Um, good question. And uh, you know, when it's it's you'll hear a lot of artists, performers talk about when you're in that moment, when you're fully committed um, to that scene emotionally. Um, you know, it's just like breathing. Uh, it's 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 just natural it comes there you know you do your work you do your prep as they always say i just did the work um as ben stiller said in <laughs> tropic thunder which is a great great line a little esoteric to the to like the actor world but very very poignant and like it made me chuckle and a lot of people just do your work so it's a lot of preparation you know it's not like it's just one of those easy things um and it's a skill set so you can you know, like any other muscle in your body, you can work that emotional muscle out to a point where, uh, when you need to pop the top and, and take it down, you can. So, um, yeah, you know what? I've always prided myself. I'm an emotional person. And that I think helps. one of the things it does, <laughs> it really does. Um, it was never, it was never getting the emotion. It was knowing how to take it, direct it and fold it and, you know, and mold it into, what that emotion really helped the scene the most uh so that was sort of my you know what i focused on as an actor and really trying to figure out where to take the emotion not having it where so for me those kind of scenes really have been my bread and butter um in the in the industry and I'll, i mean you watch a lot of my little guest stars and things like that even everwood um I, I do a lot of emotionally charged scenes in fact even when i get auditions and i'm like I read in the title like he breaks down as his son slowly dies in his hand and i'm like oh my gosh like <laughs> i'm i in the back of my head i'm always like okay i got a pretty good shot at doing this mainly because i know a lot of people are scared of their emotions a lot of people can't bring up their emotions i've always been able to do that and uh yeah the, the, it's it's one of those things it's bittersweet because they're they're a lot of fun to do and when they come out um you know something i get proud of because i'm like oh that you know i know a lot of people really can't do that the bad thing about it is is even in that scene where i'm talking to my father i've been on set for like 10 hours and i've had to stay and that particular day oh god it was um hey we're gonna shoot you in an hour i'm like great and then two hours go by and they knock on my door like hey we're gonna break for lunch I'm like okay and then you have lunch for an hour and then like okay we're gonna go back we're going to do this one scene and then we're going to go to yours and then two more hours go by and three more hours and like hey we got to shoot this scene now because this one took so long so i'll tell you another little little fun secret i guess but like they were really good about working from like ending at five like they they all had families all the the execs and producers and that's things good showing and they're like we just want it you know we don't normally you know go over our 10 or 12 hour day which is normal 12 hour day is really normal yeah. for television and we had 15 minutes and I got there that morning and now it's you know 15 minutes to 5 and I've had to live in that emotional state where you kind of have to like simmer it inside of you so and then you still have to be personal you still have to go eat lunch and be like oh hi how are you doing try not to be a crazy person <laughs> hey I'm and gonna cry engage. in 10 minutes and then, you know, go and hit that mid-word trigger that just cracks open the waterworks. 
And I remember I was actually even talking with with the creator um, at the time. We were just kind of chit chatting, and he, you know, someone PA comes over, like, you know, he's like, oh, okay, we're, you know, hey, listen, I need to let you know we've only got 15 minutes to shoot this scene. Can you do it? <laughs> and I went, well, yeah. And he was like, there we go, all right. And we did. That's what we got. Uh, and that's, that's what you awesome. have to be. You know, you have to be that. And if you're not, you should be. You should strive to be that because I think that's it's a good bar. Um, I do pride myself in that. I'll pat myself on the back, not to be overconfident. But, like, you know, you got to be a professional. It's like anything else. You know, you don't want to hire someone. Like, I don't want a plumber coming to my house and looking at a pipe and being like, yeah, I could fix that, but I don't know. Maybe I do this or maybe I do that. Like, you're going to kick them out of the house. But the one plumber who sees the problem and goes, oh, I can, I'll do this and that and it'll be done. You go, oh, great. I feel so confident. So you have to bring a lot of that to a set. Um, and you should. I mean, that's just that's just part of, like, you, you doing your work again. Do your work. Feel confident in it. And, and let it lie. Just let it go. And... Um, um, it's it's one of the toughest things to do but it's also one of the most rewarding things and it's something i still practice to this day because like anything else you can forget <laughs> yeah that's not a skill you want to forget that uh no, that's a nice thing to have know. in your pocket yeah so i i've been lucky i've been fortunate i've had good teachers and trainers and um you know still plugging away see what <laughs> happens uh well very inspirational thank you for that all right good uh so, first, actually, I should have said this at the beginning. I'm sorry. Happy Halloween, Mike. <laughs> I, can't, I don't think I said it while we were recording, but I'm happy sorry. Halloween. Happy Halloween, yes. And that'll that'll be a nice segue for... Uh, you played Jared in the 2010 horror thriller movie Wreckage. Oh, wow. Yes, I did. How was that? I just, just before we got on this call, I just got done watching it. Oh, my goodness. Well, thanks for watching it. Um, that was an interesting film um, because we had, it was it was 30 plus days of all night shoots. And uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's, that's got to be. And turn you into a film. vampire. It does, and it really kind of does mess with you. And by the end of it, you're just delirious and have no idea what time or anything is. Um, you know, we had we had a lot of fun on that. Uh, maybe too much fun, you know. Uh, and at the time, you know, uh, Scoop McNary and Aaron Paul were good friends of mine, and you know, we just it was it was a fun time. Even John Asher, the director of that, like we had we had a good time. It really felt like friends. You know, we just all clicked kind of at the beginning of that film, and uh, and some of them actually I still I still am in contact with, and they're really good. They're all good people. Yeah, uh, I, I want to say you had really good chemistry uh, on screen with Aaron Paul. I really liked uh, your guys's uh, friendship and how you guys went about those characters. I was yeah, Aaron. He was, was really one good. of the first actors I ever met, and him and I had this had the same manager for years, and uh, yeah, him and I trudged through the trenches of the of, of the business a, a few times and you know have offered support and advice um, at different times in our lives and uh, you know what I tell you what man he's one of the he's people that uh, deserves all the success I don't care what I don't think he has any I think he doesn't have any controversy around him as a person and that's great and I think that's yeah, not a that I know. Good sign. Yeah, not that I know of either. Because he is—he's such a solid. He's such a solid guy. Um, really, really nice and talented, as obviously. And um, yeah, man. Um, so it was easy with him because yeah, we were we were good friends and 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 got to hang out and um, on and off camera a lot. Um, uh, yeah, it, it was one of those films we just we just kind of weren't. You know, we're not going to reinvent the wheel. We're just going to have a good time doing it and see what happens. And uh, and that's what happened. Gosh, I haven't seen that movie in a while. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> you you and Aaron did great. You guys did Thanks. phenomenal. That film is good. Well, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, it's a very good uh, thriller horror Halloween movie. I'd recommend it to 
anyone listening. This won't be coming out today on Halloween, unfortunately, because I gotta edit and all that. But but next Halloween, you'll next hear Halloween. This. <laughs> yes, exactly. All righty. Uh, give me one second. Yeah, no, seems good. I just gotta search. Now I'm, now I'm scared. What are you searching? You're like, you know, one time in 2003, <laughs> you said that watermelons uh, <laughs> are better than apples. Do you still believe that? I'm like, oh, gosh. What kind of trouble did I get myself into? You. <laughs> no, I feel like I'm one of those two. I, I you know, I, I shy away. I, I, I'm very introverted, actually. So. I, you're good. You're good. I can be as well. Yeah, that's why I think the social media for me is that is, is always a, um, it's just, you know, the minute I start thinking about what should I put out there, and I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I'm, I'm good with me. I don't, I, don't need, I don't need someone else to like my idea for that simple gratitude. It's nice, but like, yeah. Yeah, I'd say there are some celebrities out there that, uh, it's best if they weren't on social media. I agree. I agree. We don't need to know everything that's going on with them. Yeah, I mean, if you if you have the balls to tweet it out, I hope you can stand by it at yeah, any point in your people, life. <laughs> uh, yeah, especially that's, now. I think that was sort of the trap with people was that, you know, Twitter came out and they're like, oh, great, this is my open journal to the world. And now, after 10 years, people are like, you know, that was kind of racist, what you said. And they're like, oh, my God. I forgot <laughs> I did that. I forgot racism. No. <laughs> Got that I was racist. <laughs> yeah, I think that could be kind of, not the racist part, but I think that could be definitely said about uh, Kanye, if you've seen anything he's tweeted. You know, I again, I'm a little voyeuristic on Instagram, and I and I don't. Not to sound creepy, I, I I just like seeing what people put out there and all sorts of fun DIYs and all that kind of stuff. I never really pay attention to, like platforms people stand on and, and those kind of things. Yeah, um, they they've never really interested interested me because um, not You're that there I'm for not the supportive. Content? Yeah, it's just um, it's just gotten out of hand now. Definitely. So, um, you know, even even a like to me sometimes just seems to get buried in the mix. A like becomes a number value more than that emotional. And now the emotional part too, if it is emotional, now people are weighing in on, well, there's not enough or there, you know what I mean? Or, or getting a lot of them and then people going, ooh, I want to do that again, and not getting it. And, you know, just to me, that just seems like it's just it's just exhausting. I think it's why so many people do get depressed, and we have this do have this crisis of like well, I'm not gonna say crisis. That's too dramatic. But um, you know, you know, um, depression and things like that are up, and and I get it. Uh, it's so easy to compare yourself to everyone else and figure out where you lay and and where you are in the world, and I think. You know, there's some good to that in being like, eh, you know what, maybe my weaknesses are I need to work harder, but I feel like most of the time people take these things in and they go, I'm not good enough. And I think that's what it's turned into. I'm not good enough. And and for me, I don't feel like that's a platform I, I really want to support. And I know in the business, everyone's like, oh, you got to do this. You got to do this. It helps. It helps. And I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. Um, I know it helps other people, but for me, uh, I guess I'm old school. It's like, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'd rather me speak for myself than faking some sort of picture or showing you what I had for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Wow. Can you be my dad? That was, <laughs> that was more advice than my own father would have given me. God oh. damn. <laughs> well, hey, you know, it's, it's a thing. You gotta, you gotta love you really do and know that you have value um, that was a big thing that I lacked in my childhood uh, was that value um, and, and, and no um, you know diss to my parents 
you know what you never know where your parents come from or where their parents or what they were taught the only thing we have and honestly i think kanye did say this but like don't be a victim of yourself uh, yeah, I think he said that. Because that's what it is. You can always blame somebody else for the inad inadequacies that you have. But at some point in your life, you got to take hold of that and go, you know what? I can change this. And when you do make those changes, yeah, you'll find that that's really the point. Like, I, I can't blame anybody for anything because at the end of the day, I have my own choices that I can make now. And, and we, we can change that. So do that. Find those things. Know you have value. You know, and, and find something that you love and go do it. Who cares? Who cares what other people think? All the people who made it that were big were the ones that were like, uh, you know, criticized immensely in their career. And they became someone and then everyone turned the tables. In fact, I'll, I'll tell you this and then I'll shut up because I'll, <laughs> I'll start rambling. But I, I saw this really great quote um, that Albert Einstein had said. And back in the day of when he started the theory of relativity um there was a huge uproar obviously in the scientific community and they they published a book i think this is true maybe it's not true i i unfortunately saw it on instagram i was like this is really great i didn't fact check it so i apologize i have to say that now because oh you're good the Supreme Court later but um so they published this book of a hundred scientists disproving einstein's theory of relativity and when someone confronted him about it his answer was he was like a hundred well if i was wrong wouldn't one be enough and i thought that's really interesting and i think that's kind of where we started getting immersed in listening to too many people <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you know oh, and, yeah. and not believing in ourselves. and he's right and that thing is like you didn't need a hundred people to tell me i was wrong one would have been enough but i think that's the culture we're in is like it's so easy to criticize and go no 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 and then forget what that really does to that other person who tries to put maybe something out there now and that's not always the case people aren't always trying to like put themselves and something they love out there for a good intent or purpose but um, it's all been blurred nowadays. So keep doing you. That's that's the bottom line. That's Good, the message. Good message. Good message. Uh, I hope that still stands uh, when you did this. If you can look into oh, the chat. Yeah, oh, my computer went. Uh, oh yes. <laughs> yeah. Look at you. You uh, you have done your homework, my friend. <laughs> Thought it was a good segue. You got real deep about what you put out there and then i found this and i was like what the fuck yeah <laughs> this is not where this i thought i'd find a... you <laughs> there we go this, this is why he was like this is why i wanted to do the the interview um you know what this is one of those moments where you know when you're a creative person sometimes you know you just get an idea in your head and you're like i can't stop this i've got to get this out and this is sort of a byproduct of that um for all of you who are listening out there, he has pulled up my balls in your cup video. Um, okay, so this this sort of got this was it was spawned from a Fourth of July celebration in the backyard, and we were playing beer pong back when beer pong was like really big. I still play it, uh, and you should. It's a fun game. It is. Uh, play it responsibly. Of course. And um, yeah, you know what? I just we were. <laughs> You know somebody knocked a ball in the cup and i was like yeah put my balls in your cup now drink it up and that was just this chorus and by the end of the night we were all just singing that one phrase and we we're just having a jolly good time wow you know my friend that's in this who's jay rocca uh his name is jordan really great guy really creative really smart funny guy um you know, I just, I remember I, I walked up to him and I was like, I need to make a song. And I, like, we got to do a song. I just need to. to. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of had to, you know, I mean, I mean, think about it. It's the culture that's surrounded, let's, you know, um, is that, you know, Friday kind of fun beer culture? Yes. And, uh, you know, I never really heard like a good beer pong song. I thought, what, what an opportunity, right? We had this great hook for the chorus. So I got together with one of my friends who's a producer and was like, hey, I have this idea for a song. He's like, oh my gosh, this is great. I sat down and I wrote all the lyrics, uh, all the verses to the song. And then I had my friend come in. He kind of, um, you know, clipped and trimmed some of the stuff to really make it flow 
because I didn't really have the rapper flow. Uh, when that's still good. That's still cool that you wrote your own lyrics. Like yeah, yeah. It was uh, and it was it was like you know one of those things. You, the minute I just sat down and started writing, it all just kind of came out. You're like, okay, great. And then I was like, well, now we have this great song. And I feel like, yeah, at the end of the day, I, I like the song a little better than the video, and uh, um, only <laughs> because there were so, you know, you're on a budget. Like, man, if I could have really done the, you know, way I wanted to, it would have been hundreds of thousands of dollars and all the right equipment. Um, I loved everyone who did it for me and helped me so much with it. It was it was fun. Um, but yeah, you know, this was just one of those. Let's just do something fun. Let's just not take anything too serious and, and yeah. just have a good time and. This is what we got. That's awesome. Yeah, it kind of yeah. gives me uh, some Lonely Island vibes, if you know that. Yeah, you know, I love them. You know, I was a big me Weird Al Yankovic me too. You know, fan, and then it was. It was Lonely Island, you know, there for a while. Of course, you know, you go, you did the, I did this song. I thought, man, I, I got like three or four other ideas I could do. And, uh, yeah, what, it, you is this like your only out. song? Yeah, it was. Um, Dang. I had I have a you know I have my notebook ID that I scratched out like four or five different songs and um, you know I, I enjoyed the character of DJ Biz <laughs> I um, did too and then uh, J Rocka who was really he was really the front man he's he's really he was just he's really good he he used to do funny raps all the time and they were like legit you know like you'd listen to him and you'd be like wow this is like Jay Z rapping and they'd be funny and so he was just a perfect fit to be the lead man and he that's his voice you know we both actually sang on it as well so that's all us like this was 100 percent him and him and i and uh uh and uh yeah I, we were thinking about doing uh like a whole series of it kind of depending on the popularity of this one so you know it didn't really take off which was fine it was it was still a great thing and then uh you know people get older and uh, we just never really found the, the, the time or the momentum to, to keep it going. So so now it's just one of those things I did. <laughs> but I like it. I thought it was fun. I'm glad you did it because it's uh, phenomenal all oh, around. Thank you. <laughs> I tell you what, if you if you are at a party and you are playing beer, beer pong, I, I feel like it's a great song to have in the back. Definitely on uh, the 4th of July as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Celebrate that America. <laughs> That's really funny. It's hard. It's so funny you found that. How you found? It. I, I feel like I tried finding it on YouTube and kind of. You have a. Let's see here. Just, just a sidetrack real quick. If I look up Mike Irwin interview, you did one with Screaming Goat Radio, I think. Yes. And yeah, someone was, um... someone uploaded the audio to it and somewhere in I listened to the whole thing just to cuz it's like the only interview really. Uh, yeah. With you in it, and I was <laughs> like, what the fuck this guy should have 20,000 interviews. Uh but then there's a segment where they talk about balls in your cup and I'm like, what is this? And then I find it on YouTube and I'm like, holy shit. What is going on? <laughs> From Teen Titans to Hulk to Jack and Dexter to this, like this man's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, just we do funny, funky things. So, <laughs> yeah, it's just whatever. Sometimes it's a, uh, like I said, you just have that idea in your head and you just got to get it out. And this is one of those where I'd never really done anything like this before, and thought, why not give it a, a shot, see what happens. And, Yolo. Uh, Yolo. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> you only live, only once. live once. Yeah. See, so might as well cool. make a beer. I'm said yeah, beer pong music video. <laughs> yeah, so I did. Good, good shit. Alrighty, we are now at the fan service section of this interview. Ooh, all right. Got about seven questions. All right, shoot away. Alrighty. So, first question is, when it comes to the Jack and Dexter series, you clearly being the voice of Jack, um, how invested were you into these games, or was it just kind of a paycheck? Oh, gosh. That's an easy question. Um, 
Yeah, I know I, after getting to learn you, I feel like I know the answer, but still. Yeah, you know, um, it's so hard to do any job you're not invested in. You know? Yeah, um, definitely. There's, it's so hard because um, that's when you can get lazy. And I don't, li I don't like that. Um, uh, you know, I have, you know, I grew up <laughs> a gamer. You know, I am, you know, I was, it's okay to be a gamer. That, yeah. You know, so my mom and dad, you know, uh, my dad was a computer engineer and he'd come home. We were like one of the first people in our blocks and we weren't rich or anything like that. Um, but my dad, because my dad was a computer engineer, he got to bring computers home. So like we were the first people in our block. I feel like that had a computer and dial up, you know, I remember taking it. Oh, damn. The receiver off of the rotary phone. If you remember what those are, if you even know what those are. <laughs> and then, I do you know, putting it <laughs> on the receiver and it being like doo -doo 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 -doo, right and um, my dad also had the floppy disks and he had games on them and it was like I think you know he had like an, a, a version of Pitfall on there and I loved Pitfall and um, there was another like learning game where you were a scuba diver and if you cut all the seaweed out you could pan out to the seaweed and it would spell a word so it teach you how to spell and that kind of thing and i loved i just loved it i thought it was great it was a bonding experience for my dad and i now unfortunately as games started coming out like the atari and pong and i had i had the atari 1600 and um, um and like my first real gaming i didn't get a nintendo i had a sega genesis mm. um you know, that's when my parents were like, you need to quit playing video games. You play video games too much. I mean, I got obsessed with video games. I played <laughs> video games all the time. So that was my jam. Um, that was my escape. You know, that was, um, you know, Soul Calibur was one of my favorite games. I used to play that all the time. Um, I've heard of that and one. So I remember when they wanted me Hulk. They actually released a thing about Jack, and he was like a Hulk type character. And my agent called them and said, "Well, I have the Hulk. You want to hear him?" <laughs> and they were like, "Well, of course." So I kind of think that's a little bit how that got manipulated into being Jack. And you know, it's because you had that came out and it was like, ah, I, I, you know, it's fun. Wow. And um, so to be a video game was one of the most amazing things to ever do in my life like <laughs> that oh my god yeah dude that makes sense i would too you know so every day was just joy like i enjoyed every single moment of it and it was they were such great people over at naughty dog and let me walk through the whole facility and and show i mean you got to realize too that like at the end of the day like it's it's really nice to be you know uh, you know noticed as as the character but man i probably did like two percent of the work like there is hundreds of people who live their lives doing this game um mm -hmm. you know one guy just literally worked on like just a jump from jumping from one rock to the other and rendered and did all the texturing and all that stuff don't ever play them don't ever play someone who's worked on the game because they will crush you. <laughs> uh, it's a bad bet to take. Um, <laughs> but uh, really invested. I mean, I was so excited. I'm still excited. In fact, I got my eight-year-old to play it a couple years ago. He loved he loved Jack and Daxter. And to see him, you know, really love something that I did for his entertainment. I mean, there, there's no feeling like that in the world. And... and you know i've always i've got i have all my little jack and daxter posters and games and things like that i still have my i still have my i have an original fat boy um because it's backwards compatible so i can play everything a fat um, boy yeah so when um the playstation 3 first came out it was released and so my buddy mike turner he actually got one like two weeks before it came in on the market so he's it's one of the first like i think of like first hundred, generation first generation ps3 one of the first hundred released two people oh wow um when he passed away i inherited it i still have it still works um and it was backwards compatible right so you could play playstation one and two games 
So you can play one, two, and three. Oh my god, I do remember that. Because later yeah. on in the PlayStation 3s, they took that away. They took it away. They also took away the USB ports, right? So yeah. there was four USB ports. So you could basically plug in four controllers to this PlayStation now with all the wireless and things like that. But they, you know, you can do, it gives you two automatically. I think you can still do up to four if they're wireless. Um, but yeah, they changed the whole thing. I think PlayStation was like, oh my gosh, we're going to lose money because people stopped buying the old generation game or systems and things like that. Because So they got rid of the Fat Boy. They re-released the one with the non-backwards compatible. And then they started selling, you remember, the smaller PlayStation 1. And then they started selling the smaller PlayStation 2 yeah. so that you could, you still have to have like three consoles. So this console, still you can play all three games. And so I have like, I think I have, I have, did you ever play, I'm a huge Star Wars fan by the way, Masters of Terracosas? I did not unfortunately. Do you know what that game is? I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You I'm said gonna, it was Star Wars? Yeah, so here, if you wanna know how invested I am in, in video games, <laughs> I'm, gonna give you some, I'm gonna give you some old school knowledge. This is gonna, this is gonna, this is gonna tip the Lay it on my, me. my video nerdum and help answer the question to this this fan as well to let me let me let me tell you how invested i am in video games <laughs> one of the best games ever is this game from playstation one it's called masters of terracostas it's the first time i believe mara jade was ever introduced as a character and the first time you actually see a purple lightsaber now you may have to go mm. scour the internet because when samuel jackson came out and everyone's like oh, you got a purple lightsaber i was like He's not the first one. Oh. It is a it is a street fighter style game, as in one versus one, but you can play Darth Vader versus Boba Fett or Han Solo, Luke Skywalker. You can unlock Mara Jade. And it's it's you know, it's a street fighter, it's a um uh dead or alive type style Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm familiar with Mortal Kombat. And it is it's awesome. So you have your upgrades and you know everyone gets to do their own little thing like when did that Darth game Vader come out choke people. oh my gosh this was like pfft. i want to say like 90s late 90s maybe early, maybe um one hmm. of the only star wars games where it is a fighting game too like where you are just one-on-one -on -one. uh masters of terracosta so going back to it super invested super invested I, I i i was over the moon i wanted to make this something special um when i got the job they sent me the game and said will you play this so that you can have a reference point for the second one because in, in the first one he doesn't talk and i thought this is the coolest thing that's ever happened to me in my life ever because i am literally getting free video games now to play and like my job is to play this from beginning to end so that i know how to carry this over into the next one and i mean i played the whole weekend i think i stayed up way past my <laughs> bedtime every night and i played the first jack um and had some friends come over and like we just went through level to level to level to level and watched all the movies and all that and like the more you know the deeper i got into the level and the more i got to enjoy the character of jack and like play him i was like oh my god this is so cool like oh my gosh i'm i'm you know i'm jack i'm controlling jack and i get to be this voice so um did you know they were at that t when you were doing playing the game and you know they they wanted you to be jack and things like that did you know that they were also the creators of crash bandicoot Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. I I played Crash too. Like I was very familiar. Yeah, I love with Crash. That's a good one. More of Naughty Dog games, you know. Um, and I really feel like I think Crash was really their first big success, and then it was Jax. So pretty um, sure, yeah, yeah. Because um, you know, it's funny. It's like I always feel like since I was like a Sega guy, I loved Nintendo. Don't get me wrong. But when it came to consoles, I always ended up getting everything but Nintendo's because I think everyone else had one, so I didn't need one. Mm. You know, so I got yeah. like the, you know, Sega Genesis. What was the other? It was sixty four? Nintendo sixty four? No, it was the one. There was PlayStation, and there was something else. There was some other console that came out. It was real short lived. I can't remember the name, but anyway, it doesn't matter. 
Um, <laughs> so yeah, I was always familiar with sort of those other, the competitor of Nintendo, and it was like their Mario. And I just remember being like, this is really cool, because Crash was like their original Mario, and then this was, seemed like to be like their next sort of branch out to it. And I know there for a while, like there was a little Ratchet and Clank rivalry, and at one point we did like a little blurb on Hot Shots Golf, and while I was <laughs> waiting my turn to do the voice of Jack, uh, in the booth was the guy who did the voice of, of Ratchet. And uh, we had a fun little joking banter. I think he won out in the end. He got a movie. We didn't make But uh, it was cool. It was cool to kind of have, just to be immersed in that video game world. That's all I wanted. You know, like, that, how cool is that? To, you know, not just play the game, but get immersed in that world on that side of it and really feel like you're you're just a part of that world rather than just being a player. You know what I mean? Like I felt like a creator, a <laughs> user. I was a user. My Tron reference. That uh, um, <laughs> that I can't imagine. Uh, play like playing the game over and knowing that you how big a part you are in the game. That is, it's it's probably got to be a little trippy as well. It was. You, you're just like, no, come on. There's okay, you know. You know, Daxter was really, uh, was really the, um, uh, he, the big voice, you know, for the first one. So I kind of thought maybe, well, maybe it'll be more his story. I'll be kind of like, but didn't realize like, yeah, I'm still going to be the guy <laughs> you get to control. And yeah, I mean, yeah, that's it was super, how, that was just awesome. It was so awesome. It's still awesome. I still, you know, like I said, I got to play it. I played it last year. One and two, we went through, like I said, with my, my eight-year-old, and um, we just, we played one, two, and then he got really into Jack Racing, and uh, <laughs> uh, it's just fun. That's cool. awesome. I have a question here from Cherry, uh, since we're kind of talking about, <laughs> uh, since we're kind of talking about uh, the voice acting, she asks, uh, did you bring any of your own personality into the role, or, and or did you have any input when it came to Jack? Um, you know, you, you're going to hear this a lot too, especially if you do interviews, you, you can't help but bring yourself into that project. Um, yeah. because you got to find those ways to relate regardless if it's a fictional character or not. I mean, most of them are fictional characters anyway. So, um, so yeah, you know, I brought, um, you know, a piece of me for sure into that. Um, and kind of what definitely. you were saying at the beginning, you you they wanted you because uh, your Hulk performance, and you kind of the aggressive kind of character, they wanted that from you. Yeah, you know, and that's which was funny because they're, you know, they wanted sort of that split personality, and um, I loved, I, I you know, I'm one of those characters, you know, even if you see my resume, like, I'm either the boy next door, kind of normal guy, or I'm the crazy emotional person. So Jack was kind of in that same vein, except he was both. So he was kind of like your your good, clean-cut hero, and then he got to turn into Dark Jack and be that, like, crazy, like, ah, I'm gonna, like, ah, you know, and, and <laughs> so much fun. That was so much fun to do. Uh, it still is. And um, so... He, yeah, I brought a lot. I brought a lot of me and a lot of eccentric ideas and and ways to do it, and um, and they they let me do my thing. And if it was too much, we we pulled it back. And they were such a great <laughs> guideline. You know, we had lines we needed to stay within due to like family stuff, and which is fine. That you're always going to have sort of those perimeters that you got to kind of pertain to. And then I think we did get to experiment a little bit more and kind of go. Well, maybe it's not the line's not really there. We can go a little further here and this and that. So um, they were real collaborative. They were just they were and, and they were there kind of doing a new thing too um, with this. And um, yeah, it was just it was a very nurturing environment. So um, so yeah, I brought I did bring a lot of me into it, and um, um, and then really got to you know take into what they wanted as well. So that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. My next question, uh, are you aware of the amount of fan art that's been made about this game? Or these games? Um, no. I'm not, 
No, I, I don't really know. <laughs> I know... Uh, you know, I don't know. I, uh... No, I guess I don't. And I'm, I'm and now I'm being presumptuous, assuming there's a lot. May I present to you some? Yeah, please. Um... <laughs> Now, I know there's a lot of, like, cosplay, um, and I get, you know, people reach out to me for that, show me pictures and drawings, but no, I don't guess I really know the scope some of Some people do some pretty good cosplay, I will say. I've seen some really good cosplay of Jack yeah. and Kira and, uh, yeah. I think, Torn. Yeah. Let's see here. So, I have no, there's no, I don't have, I don't really have any credits, I'm sorry, so I'm... I just kind of found what I found on Google Images, and I was just like, "That's all good." Let's let's see what he thinks about this. I think this is some really detailed, <laughs> artistic. You know, a lot yeah. of mm, a lot of oomph was put into this. I guess really, I'm more surprised that like you know that Bill. I mean, because you you say you just graduated high school, and I think about that, and this game was made. You know, what almost twenty years ago now. <laughs> Uh, and to see a picture like this, this picture of like, I mean, obviously a kid drew it. Um, no, I drew this. Oh, you drew this. I drew this for you. It's oh, just that's... part of a big fan. No, I didn't. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, good job. Uh, <laughs> no, I, you, again, uh, the, the fact that this would create or spark some kind of creative or imaginative stroke to have some some kids sit down um and and physically recreate it is is really kind of an honor like you just go wow that's so great and i don't even feel like i get to take any of the um credit for it because like i said i did like you know we just got to bring the voices which i think is is important but like there are so many great people who really created this and i think that's really just a good testament to them as well and it is it's cool it's cool to see that kind of stuff because uh, well here here i got i got a better one don't worry don't worry i ain't just gonna have you look at oh, some paint yeah that's cool pictures there you go yeah this one i was like damn did a great yeah, job like a realistic almost like guardians of the galaxy kind of kind of vibe artwork. yeah it's cool they ever do a live action movie they better they better ask me to at least audition for it <laughs> oh god damn i'll be damned if they don't yeah well, i'll climb we'll, right up that corporate ladder and shake we'll some heads start a campaign um yeah again it's it's cool to see these kind of things because you know for me being a gamer and sharing that love and, and, and at, the, at the at that time you could tell that all the people at naughty dog um, we're all gamers too you know like we were all in this same kind of like you know because like video games are kind of nerdy if you didn't play sports and you, you played video games you're kind of dorky and you were kind of a nerd and you know you got shunned for it a little bit I know nowadays I think it's a lot more acceptable and that's also nice to see but you know it, it's it's great to see um, you know that people honor it and that they had a great experience with it as well to the point where they needed to recreate it for themselves and you know if that's if that's something that i can hang my hat on as as a, i don't want to say legacy because um i'm just glad that i got to be a part of something that made people enjoy their childhood regardless of whatever uh, a little more you know i i feel like i'm one of those little misfit toys on that island and no one got to play with me and to do something like this and see that everyone got a, a benefit out of it more than just myself is is cool it's very cool yeah that's awesome here i got a let's see i got this one don't worry i'm gonna show you like a ton oh this one's yeah, a little more in jack. in the holiday yeah you got dark yeah. jack he wants trick or treat he's going trick or treating looks like he that would be a good halloween murdered. costume yeah as a dark jack guy yeah i like that I don't think I've seen someone cosplay Dark Jack, but I've seen a lot of I Jack did. cosplays. You know, you can start that revolution. I am <laughs> I'm going to be Joker for this year, actually. Nice. But I might consider it next year, honestly. That isn't yeah. a bad idea. And I I think since I was a kid, I've always wanted to do some sort of Jack 
cosplay. Like honestly, like it's he's got a nice costume. Like it's he does, and it's iconic. Exactly. You see it, and you're like, that's like even if you don't know Jack, you're like, that's someone. Like that's like that's a, that's from something. That's important. That's that's a character right there. You know, he's got yeah. the long ears, the goggles, armor. Yeah, it, it does really kind of like there's like this elvish steampunk you know yeah i would love for them to develop all that stuff more more i want to do it again uh, but yeah i think i think you're right i agree with you on that it's a cool it's iconic i mean there's a there's you know for those who know it it's undeniable what it is here i got okay one last one and then we'll be done with this um section of fan art <laughs> So I, I will have to admit, my buddy who was a comic book artist, and I have, I'm not gonna say I've seen it all, but I'm not sure anything shocks me. <laughs> uh, because I have seen a lot. Uh, you know, his characters, um, because he created, he's, as, he was, he's, they still are operating Aspen Comics. Um, he did this character, Fathom. Uh, her name in the character, the comic book was Fathom. The character's name was Aspen. And you know she's hot, and um, he also did Witchblade, and he, you know, seductive. Like he was so talented, but like, you know, people did some pretty risque things with his stuff as well. So, uh, hey, if that's your thing. Go for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, is it a little uncomfortable, I guess? Uh, but uh, hey, you know, to each his own. I tried to find the most NSFW and tame that I could find. <laughs> This is this is what I found. I was just like, I was honestly not expecting the series to have a fan base that would, you know, do fan art and draw things to this level. Yeah. <laughs> was not expecting it. So when I found it, I was like, oh my god, it'd be kind of funny to see how Mike would react to <laughs> some yeah, of it. Yeah. Uh, again, I think uh, luckily I pushing just due to the nature, like uh, uh, you. Yeah. I've seen a lot of crazy stuff when it comes to that, and um, and uh, so it doesn't surprise me. I'll put it that way. Um, That's it fair. is definitely inter interesting to see. <laughs> um, but like I said, hey, people, people are gonna do what they gotta do. <laughs> All if right, they want to do it, Jax, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next question is from Arrestus. I'm pretty. Sure, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, Arrestus asks. Uh, to what degree did performing Jack influence your career going forward after the games? Hmm. Um. Gosh, that's a, uh, uh, I don't know. I guess you know you get on a train. <laughs> I came out to LA to be an actor. I've always wanted to be an actor. Um, I'm lucky it got wrapped into the voiceover stuff too so i'm not sure if it was like you know i can't say that like jack inspired me to keep going because i already had sort of that idea of like let's just see where we can go with this um it definitely made it a nice fun time um every job you get is a little small little victory and you know some of them you hold a little bit more dear to your heart this one definitely is close to my heart as well um so at the end of the day i guess really you know it just inspires you to keep going um you know at the end of the day as 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 much joy i get and i think a lot of performers get from doing the work and and doing that you always are unsure about well is this really something that you know people are gonna like uh we're artists we're insecure and so it does it gives you a little confidence boost to go you know what maybe i can do something with this and i'll keep going so i guess if it did anything it was just that um again being like i think this is something i can i can do and i enjoy it and um and that's a gift you know i don't know if a lot of people get to find those things and then experience them in a way where it doesn't like a job you know it was a passion and um the more you get to do it it almost becomes a drug and you want to just keep doing it more so i guess <laughs> that's kind of where i'm at with that probably a pretty a, yeah, it's probably probably a pretty good notch to have uh under your belt to be like hey i'm jack you definitely proud of it i am proud of it for sure yeah that's yeah, something to be proud it. of i'd say it it's is. phenomenal game and character character development and uh you 
Alright, I'm gonna get heated. You provided so much for Jack. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. We had a good time. We definitely did. It was fun. It was so much fun. Here, uh, next question is, do you by any chance have any connections or still talk to uh, Max Casella? I think that's how I say it. Uh, you know, it's funny. I never actually met him. What? Um, him and I, we, we never recorded at the same time. Wow. What? Uh, in fact, all of my dialogue was done by myself. It that was just sounds me awkward me. as hell. Um, it's it's yeah, it's part of the challenge. It's part of part of your job, and I think that's you know why some people can and can't. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, cool thing. Yeah, we never. I've never met him. Um, there's only there's only a couple of people I've met, and that was just because either I like worked with them or crossed paths. Um, in some other card, like I I knew Clancy Brown, um, who played the Baron Praxis, right. He was the prison guard in Shaw. Oh Baker. yeah, he's also uh, Mr. Krabs. He's Krusty the Crab. Uh, that dude's in everything, by the way. Yeah, he's yeah, um, he's really deep into voice acting. Oh, so and he's got such a great voice, and he's such a great guy. And I got to work with him. I did um, Jackie Chan Adventures. I don't know if you ever watched that animated series. I've not. Like eight or nine years, and I I got the pleasure of being one of the main henchmen. You know, kind of like the main foot in oh, like, that's Teen awesome. Mutant Ninja Turtles, right? So I wasn't Shredder; I was one of the head henchmen. I was called Grandmaster Ice, obviously. So maybe, maybe this is a little fortuitous of like turning into DJ Biz, but <gasps> my my character, <laughs> Grandmaster Ice, in <laughs> in the Jackie Chan Adventures, is a lot like DJ Biz because he was kind of like this rapper. Y'all, he's just you know doing his thing right being like tell, telling all them 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 lines like yo you better put that cookie down you know i don't know whatever <laughs> um and he was the main he was the main villain so we got to you know every week get together and, and work so it was cool in the, knowing he was the baron praxis as well so he's really the only one i met was clancy brown so max i never uh i never met i never worked with um i really really admire his work though um because i mean he really he really brought so much color and so much flavor and excitement to to the game and to uh to dexter so oh yeah yeah his voice really stands out i, I don't think i've heard him like his regular voice but the, i mean his dexter voice i mean it really stands you gotta watch out doogie hauser doogie hauser do you oh man okay so you know the show how i met your mother yes Okay, so the main one of the main characters on that, and I'm now that I've just said that, I can't remember the lead actor's name. Uh, his name is. I know his name's Ted in the show. Yeah, what's his name? Oh gosh, hold on. Uh, now I'm gonna have to go search real quick. Um. Anyways, there's a show called Doogie Hauser. Yeah. And it was about a kid doctor. And it was in the late 80s. And um, Josh Doogie's, Radner. Yeah. Doogie's best friend was Max. Neil Patrick Harris. Oh, Neil Patrick Harris. So Neil Patrick Harris was Doogie Hauser, and Max was his best friend. So if you ever want to hear his real voice, go Doogie Hauser. So I, I grew up on that show. I loved that show. Um, and I know he's done. I, he, he works a lot, too. Um, so I know he's still doing like acting stuff. You can see his stuff. Check him out on my IDB. I'm promoting him now, but um, <laughs> yeah, never got to meet him. Yeah, dang. Right. Maybe maybe one day. That's cra that's crazy. I would have I would have thought probably with, along with a bunch of other people would have thought that you guys were in the same booth like that whole time. Just that I would imagine you need kind of need you need that chemistry of being with each other. But I mean I mean it still worked. Like you guys sounded great in the game. Uh, well, thanks. Yeah, you know it does help in a lot of animated series, Teen Titans, um, Jackie Chan Adventures stuff. So I did. Um, you are in the room with them, and it is nice to feed off of them right there. Yeah. Uh, with the video game and all that, um, sometimes you get the 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 privilege of having the people you're talking with in the scene have already recorded their lines, so you can create that chemistry because they'll play their lines and then you react to that. 
Um, yeah, okay. And sometimes, sometimes you're the first one, so you really just have someone um, reading the lines off stage. Sometimes you just kind of read them in your head, and then you just say the line, and they go, oh, "We need to sound more like this." But yeah, through that through that phase, we uh, yeah we we were all by ourselves. <laughs> Dang. Mm. All right. Uh, next question is from Darren, and this is a question that I think a lot of people uh, are wondering and would mm -hmm. question. If a Jack 4, an official Jack 4, were to go into production, would you come back to reprise your role? Uh, uh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> I figured as much. Yeah. Um, if that ever happens, I know, I know Dottie, Naughty Dog, a couple of head changes and things like that, and you know, they had, I don't really know the drum, what happened over there. I kind of, you know, I don't really involve myself in there. And at one point they had done another game and come to everyone to see if they do it. And oh, that you were reached out? Uh, I think so. This is a while ago. I don't know what made or what happened to it. I just remember do like you, there was- Do you know the Last of Us game that they made? Yes, yeah, yeah. So they scrapped the Jack Four idea because they and they released some concept art at that time that they were coming up for the game, and it looked like it was going to be a little more uh, realistic, almost like this uh, piece of fan art, the like second one that I sent you. Kind of almost yeah. looks like that. It was a, just look a touch of more realism to it, and uh, it's, yeah. I guess somewhere along that line they just scrapped it, and then they started working on The Last of Us, and so yeah, it, hey, you know what? That's Maybe that's awesome though. Line. That they reached out to you like that's that's hopeful it was a while ago it was a while ago and yeah i don't you know unfortunately sometimes when these things arise in their infant stages you know your people if you will quotation marks and my people you know they talk and do their stuff so yeah. i remember something years ago this is you know this is like five years ago probably and being excited and then never really hearing anything about it so yeah, um, damn. Yeah, maybe if they decide uh, that, because that game's huge, and I don't know, maybe they'll Christmas bonus make this again. <laughs> we have a uh, we a part of the thing that's a part of our podcast is we literally nip and take any little thing that Naughty Dog puts out in hopes that it is somewhat going towards a uh, a Jack Four or. Because cause they had a, uh, I mean, there's Jack X, which is kind of just like a racing game on its own. I don't think it really was much to add. I mean, there was a story, yeah, but it's like an official after three, I think, is what people are looking for. And then, you know, you had yeah. Lost Frontier that uh, was great. It was great, you know. <laughs> and uh, but, but people after that, they were like, a Jack 4 would be great. Yeah. Um, and so what is it the uh as the new playstation 5 comes out naughty dog also announced on their twitter that all the playstation 4 games are going to be backwards compatible and they made a list of uh like a picture kind of list of all the games that they've made that will be coming to playstation 5 and they added jack and dexter into the picture and everyone's like all right all right they're still uh, they're still thinking about it they're still they still got them yeah, yeah, I do know that they released uh, like a bundle, like you could download on the PlayStation Four a Jack and Daxter bundle, and I think you could get all three games and maybe Jack. All Racing. four, yeah, all four. Number I got four. that. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know. I there don't, was I... that they uh, they teamed up with a company called Limited Runs Games, and they came out with these like uh... <sighs> how do I explain it? They're like these super game bundles where you get the game you got the soundtrack to the game you got oh. these little uh figures i have right in front of me uh, a precursor oh, cool. orb and it all came oh, that's awesome yeah uh what was else what else the trading cards there were some trading cards in it a U and a oh. usb stick in the shape of a playstation 2 memory card <laughs> they get yeah and it's all packaged in this like like box thing i don't know how it looks epic you'll have to look it up just look up limited runs games jack and dexter and just go to google images and you'll see 
uh, how they looked and how they packaged it. It's it was so cool. I was they they're a bit pricey for me, so I was only able to get the first one. But they did one eat a bundle like that for each game up until Jack X. Oh wow! That was only That's like very cool. th- I want to say that was about two three three about three years ago. No, yeah, who knows, man? Yeah. Two years ago. But uh, maybe maybe so there's, one day the stars will cross and align or whatever. Or the stars will align. I'll do a fourth one. Have you played the Last of Us two? Uh, no, unfortunately, you know, growing up and being a dad and uh, yeah, you got a, so much time. Being an adult, uh, you know, the the video gaming. I used to really. I mean, I was a gamer. Um, nowadays, I'm more of a uh, sidekick. You know, I let my I let my uh, my son really take the hold the reins on that one we play a lot of you know and unfortunately there's not a lot of family good family games like we were playing subnautica i don't know if you ever played that game that game's pretty amazing i have not um it's pretty cool it's a little survival game and then we've been playing rocket league so oh um, i'm all about rocket league yeah that's so a we've good been doing game. that um so now i kind of i'm second video games are a little second fiddle every once in a while maybe if i want to think i just kind of want to escape I'll play them, but um, well, I just yeah, no, I, I want to really say remember. if you since you haven't played, I'll say this: it's not a spoiler, uh, but in the Last of Us two, which they also did for the first one, there is a reference to Jack and Dexter. Actually, there's a TV set and like a what is it? A TV? What's underneath TVs? I'm fresh out of ideas. A holder What's under the oh. <laughs> what holds the TV. And then your DVDs. Like your TV stand, yeah. Stand! Oh my yeah. gosh, I could have just said that. In you can your t- that later. <laughs> <laughs> There's a TV, a TV stand, and a PlayStation yeah. 2, or maybe a 3. And it has a case of Jack and Dexter and Uncharted right next to each other. In oh, that's cool. The Last of Us 2 game. Yeah, I know. So seeing things like it, like like I said, our podcast, we, we find little things like that. And we're like, dude dude <laughs> this could be it like they're still thinking about this game they awesome. ha- have to do something with it like oh, hey you know i mean if he, it is not impossible and is not unheard of and it has happened you know the fans get together and and if enough people you know commit to supporting a video game's life they'll they'll, they will bring it back to life so i don't know maybe that's your maybe that's your destiny is uh is is bringing jack four to life and see what happens uh get the fans around it and uh you know see if they can recreate it yeah my only fear would be that naughty dog doesn't think that the jack series doesn't have a big enough fan base that's why they don't want to pursue a fourth game. sure but i feel like if you know having the big not like being naughty dog like you've already pumped out like superior games like games people are going to remember and recognize and go down in history video yeah. video game history so if you came out with a game jack four it might be a little confusing for people to be actually you know what it probably wouldn't be a four you know they'd probably it'd be like a jack and dexter and then like a little remake. name after it yeah or a remake. yeah listen i crazier things have been done you know exactly. i know there's a lot of and that's and that's it is that you're right there they may not know that there is a huge and who knows what the following is it may be um but yeah if there's a way to to you know it's all about numbers and if they see that there's 10 million people who would play jack and dax or the new one you're you, they would be silly not to chase after that it's all money anyways show them that there's money in there and they will do it Definitely. Start your Jack and Daxter forum now. Yeah, or a Kickstarter. Not may not Kickstarter. What is it? Uh... Yeah, you wouldn't need a Kickstarter. Luckily, it wouldn't cost any money. Just a, just a channel or a podcast that gains enough, uh, you know, followers of that one particular genre. That's how a lot of actors sometimes do is like they do like little scenes and put them on YouTube and if they get enough subscribers, you know, a couple million people are watching it a week, 
you know, ABC and NBC, all those companies, they look at that and go, oh, maybe we should make a pilot out of it. So it's not unheard of. It's really not. Yeah. Oh, that would be the dream. One day. <laughs> One day. One day. We're gonna keep, we'll put that out there and we'll, we'll see what happens. I got one last question for you okay. and then two kind of other questions that aren't Jack and Dexter related. One last question. <laughs> uh, do you still have Jack in you? And do you mind delivering a line for us? If you're uncomfortable, that's fine, but I figured I'd ask. Oh yeah, I still have, I still have Jack in me. Oh. So Jack and Dexter, Let's see, uh, I just need a good line, like, you know, I did a couple of those things where he would come into Dark Jack and be like, ah! <laughs> Daxter, we gotta go find those precursor stones. I don't know. Hell Does that yeah. sound like him? <laughs> I think he's still I think I think I definitely hear his voice, even when you're just talking normally. Yeah, I uh, I kind of just, you know, it was funny, is that it was a good fit, you know, um, I just kind of go in a lower register when I played with Jax and I'd just be down here most of the time and then when he'd get crazy I'm like, ah! and... thank you very much uh, Mike I very of much course. appreciate your time yeah no, for, no problem uh, one for having me. one little la <clears throat> oh my god my voice is going well, the only last little question I have is uh, what uh, you would like the listeners to support if you have like uh, I don't know like a charity or anything as such going on or uh, is there any future roles uh, in shows movies games to look out for that you may be in uh, if you're allowed you know, to there's say always stuff in the mix um, you know keep your eyes open your ears peeled and um, you know there's so many great charities out there I think it's great to give um, I don't have anything specific so I will leave you with this is know the value of yourself and live in it and move forward with it. And, uh, you know, go out there and have some fun. <laughs> That's it. Sweet. Awesome. Big round of applause <laughs> by just me only clapping. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Mike. Thank so you much. Appreciate you. It was fun. Appreciate you too. And, uh, Hey, we'll see you out in the, uh, social media world. Hell yeah. All right, bud. Enjoy your weekend. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Happy Halloween to you. <laughs> Bye.